To choose the worst villain of the 20th century, who will you choose? Of course, the answer may vary depending on the perspective of how to view a villain, but most people will say Adolf Hitler is the worst villain. But if we are ranking based on how many people were killed, Hitler is actually the third. On top of Hitler, there are Chairman Mao and Stalin. Hitler is known for murdering 6 million Jews while Chairman Mao killed more than 40 million Chinese people. Stalin killed 6 million Soviet citizens, plus 30 million indirectly by making poor decisions during the German-Soviet War. The first episode of the 20th Century Massacre series starts now. 1922, Vladimir Lenin, the father of USSR, became seriously ill because of an assassination attempt, brain damage, and overwork. The right side of his body was paralyzed, and for a period of time, he suffered from aphasia. He knew he would die soon, so he had to decide on a successor. He had two candidates, Lev Trotsky and Yusuf Stalin. Lenin had a hard time deciding one over the other. Trotsky was a smart leader, and he was good in giving speeches, but he was stubborn and had a strong ego, so he had quite a few enemies in the Communist Party. If Lenin were to assign Trotsky as a successor, he knew this would cause conflict after his death within the party. On the other hand, Stalin only had a few enemies, and he had experience being a leader in different positions. But Stalin was not smart enough compared to Trotsky, and during the prosecution of minor ethnicity groups in the Soviet Union, he showed Lenin he could possibly become a tyrant. Lenin could not decide, until one day, Stalin came and asked if he could help run the party while he was sick. Lenin made him the first secretary of the Communist Party, and that was Lenin's worst mistake in the Soviet history. Stalin fully used his new power to take control over the Communist Party. During this time, two among the founders of USSR, who also hated Trotsky, joined forces with Stalin and created the Troika, a three-leader system. In fact, they did not work together because they liked each other, but because they wanted to contain Trotsky and used each other to dominate more power over the other. Their relationship was like a time bomb. Later in 1922, Lenin noticed something was wrong and secretly asked Trotsky to keep Troika in check. This was soon discovered by Stalin and he felt deep disappointment for Lenin whom he had followed like his own father. This is probably the first part of the development of Stalin's paranoia, which later triggered his madness, the Great Purge. Stalin used his power to control Lenin's doctors and put his secretaries as Lenin's guards to keep eyes on him. Lenin now fully understood what was going on around him, but was too late to stop it. He left a note to remove Stalin from his current first secretary position and warned other Communist Party members about Stalin's ambitions. This note was first read after two years, shortly after Lenin's death. Trotsky tried to fulfill Lenin's wish, but Stalin was too strong to be stopped. So instead of Stalin being kicked out, it was Trotsky who was exiled to Siberia. After Lenin's death, Stalin politically used mm. Lenin to prove his uh -huh. rightfulness as the successor. He installed Lenin's statues and giant portraits all over the Soviet Union. On Lenin's will, he requested his body to be buried next to his mother's grave, but Stalin chemically preserved and displayed his body to use as a tool for worship. These political shows were good enough to fascinate the naive civilians. Even the public was on Stalin's side now. He then removed his Troika members out of the party, and he completely kicked Trotsky out of the country. Stalin continued to suffer from the extreme anxiety that one day the people close to him will cause harm because he did the same on his way to the current position. This anxiety later developed into a serious paranoia which later led to the Great Purge. In the next video, we will talk about the Great Purge. <laughs>